Ireland is a small place, but it's got a really rugged landscape. And within one mile, you could have a rugged coastline, you could have flat open fields, you could have bog lands, and you could have cliffs. Last year in Ireland, over 400 people needed to be rescued. And so for us, it's been a perfect place to bring together the people who can develop a software like this and test it as we go live in the field. My name is Leo Murray, currently a deputy team leader. Donegal Mountain Rescue Team. We started using drones about two and a half years ago. Very quickly we realised there was a lot of potential involved in it. Obviously things like it gets from A to B very quickly, but we soon realised there's still a big piece missing. We're going to conduct a search here today. And my name is Michael Hurst. I'm 14 years in the Coast Guard and four years officer in charge of the unit. We're just setting up the drone. Michael there is just putting in the landing pad. I'm setting up the iPad. Yeah, I think the Mavic Pro is great. I, I couldn't say enough good about it, really, since we started using it. I've had it out in all sorts of conditions. So we do all our checks and uh, make sure everything is right before we take off. Uh, Dronesar is designed um, for DJI drones, and it enables um, these drones made by DJI with a range of rescue-specific functions that otherwise uh, they normally wouldn't have uh, off the shelf. The idea with the Drone SAR app is primarily to reduce risk for the first responders. These people are going out and risking their lives to save our loved ones. And so we felt that what if we could create a systematic way to help them do their job, reduce risk and make them more efficient. Drone SAR is a software that makes grids and waypoints all automated for the pilot. So he doesn't have to worry about flying the drone and can give his full attention to the stream from the camera. You can change the height of the grid, you can change the speed of the drone and the orientation. We need a grid because if you're flying manually it's very easy not to fill the whole area you're searching and you could easily miss out areas. Whereas if when you use a grid, 100% of the grid is uh, covered with a 10% overlap. When the drone finds something, the pilot has a number of options they can do. If they're not so sure, they can drop a pin, and this is a good way to keep track of various different objects that might be in the field. You can then fly a specific mission to those points on a separate flight. If you're a little bit more confident, or you pass something that's difficult to inspect, so say a, a ruined building, for example, you could pause the mission, and you can descend and inspect that object manually. So you can fly down and make sure that there's nothing there that you need to find. Once you're satisfied, you can resume the mission. The software will fly the drone back to the last waypoint and continue on to make sure that the whole area is covered. When a drone has been used in the field, um, it's a very important thing to realise that there's a very small chance that the pilot is also the subject matter expert in aerial search. We very quickly realised that the app had to be more than just a function for pilot. Man Head Coast Guard, Delta Charlie, can you confirm you have streaming from the drones over? So we designed a live stream function that streams drone positional data and uh, drone video to any internet browser. And this allows um, command and control units uh, access to log in from a secure browser to see all of their drones listed and allow them to watch each of the individual drones. Drone Star, if you like, was the final piece of the search and rescue drone jigsaw. Drone Star allows us to put structure into the drone searching uh, capability. And finally, if you do find a missing person or a casualty, you can share that location to a predetermined list of people. When the drone was flying, teams are very quickly realising that when they're looking at, at something through the camera, that it was very difficult to determine where that uh, position was and to relay that lat long over the radio was quite difficult. So we designed a function that allowed the pilot to automatically share that location to all of his team members at the same time. And this means that the teams can stop what they're doing and route directly to the location. Uh, on the email, you'll see uh, an image of the person or the victim or the person in distress and also a number of links be it Google Map links as much positional data as we possibly can get into that email to be sent out so they can stop what they're doing and route directly and it saves time uh, in the overall search. One of the great things about Dronesar is it was built in the field with the search teams. Software has evolved with the teams in the field. Then we've built in the extra layers so that all that data is coming from the field, being pushed out to the rescue coordination centers so they can process this data live, reduce time, reduce risk, and hopefully save lives. <laughs>